What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Animation Power Tips. Thanks to Autodesk once again for sponsoring this series. We did one episode before about layers and I kind of covered the basics of layers and you guys actually kind of had nothing but good comments about that. So in this episode, I'm gonna dive a little deeper on how you can customize your layers to make it your own. So let's get started with another episode. So first things first, um, Maya blank as usual. Also, um, I have to say that if you haven't really watched any of the previous episodes before this one, make sure to actually go and check them out because they are kind of like uh, sequential in a way. Um, we actually been starting slow, kind of showed the basics of Maya and now I'm starting to show a little bit more of advanced tips. So if this feels either too advanced for you or you don't really get it, I promise you guys you will make sense once you actually see them back to back. But on this one, we're gonna go a little bit deeper on layers. So the very first thing that you're gonna see when I click on my layers, so you can find your layers button here on your top right. So whenever I click on it, normally it will actually show up here on the bottom of your channel box. So you have your channel box here on top and normally as soon as you actually click that button, it will showcase here on the bottom. Now mine are actually separated and the reason why is mainly because um, there's options in the layers that I'm gonna take you guys through. And the first option that I'm gonna take you guys through is floating window. So if you click on this option here, you basically get a floating window with your layers like this, right? So this is just layers. There's no display layers, there's no anim layers, it's just display layers. And this actually helps you a lot because it means that you don't have, especially if you don't use display layers, you can just work, use this on a side like this or like that or somewhere in your window that is an obstructive or put it perhaps on another monitor and you know that this way you will actually have your layers there and as an animator most likely you probably will use layers a lot so having it this way means that you can constantly kind of check where your layers are without actually being obstructed by anything else. You can even close the channel box like this. You have more real estate to actually kind of play uh, your animations and, and actually see your animations. So that's the first tip that I can give you guys. Definitely make your layers floating window. If you go back to your file, save preferences, it means that this will be saved anytime you open Maya this will actually show up this way, even your Windows display. So if you actually save it this way, like I have it right now, next time you open Maya, it will be like this. So now let's go through a little bit more in detail of what I mean about customizing your layers. I'm just gonna use this scene um, for you guys to kind of see uh, what I mean about like customizing your layers. But if you actually wanna see more about this scene specifically and how we got to this point, check episode seven. So you guys can see how I took an idea from beginning to blocking. Um, might actually give you guys some ideas. Um, also the keys here on the bottom, they are green and red. This is basically to indicate to me as an animator which keys are in betweens and which keys are golden poses, right? Um, that's basically me kind of like going through and just like finding out exactly what, what matters and what doesn't. So you have your anima animation layers here and let's say that this uh, animation is now at a state that you can actually start um, polishing things or actually kind of tweaking things or perhaps as I mentioned in a previous video you just want to see how an idea pans out and instead of actually kind of destroying the animation that is there you put a layer on top and you want to test it out now the first thing you do is actually click this button here obviously because it creates a layer now as I'm gonna click it now, you will see that my layers are displayed differently. My base animation uh, layer is at the top and my animation layer is at the bottom. Normally, it's flipped. And the way you do this is basically by going to uh, options and reverse layer stack. So if I untick that, you're gonna see that it is as normal, which where the animation layer shows up at the top. Now, to me personally, and this is definitely a personal thing, this doesn't make sense to me because if I have my base animation and I put a layer on top, I expect it to actually kind of be almost reverse, right? So anything that I have on my main layer shows up at the top. I know that's my animation. And then anything that I add at the bottom just kind of comes through as like a, a, a stack down of layers, almost like paper. So for me, for uh, reversing the layer stack makes more sense because I know that this is my animation, my raw animation, and this is gonna be my layers. Now, when you actually add a layers, obviously you can either select an object to add to this layer. 
um, or you can select a few and do the same thing. You can add selected options to the layer. This is not a secret to anybody, most of you would know. Now, um, I'm just gonna add a few more layers to like a couple of controllers just to kind of indicate to you guys a few things. So now we have three layers in the base animation. The very first tip that I can give you when it comes to uh, layers and customizing them and making sure that they are or as organized as possible is for you to rename your layers in a way that makes sense. Keep your base animation as your base animation because most animators actually know what that means but when it comes to the individual layers they create after that definitely make sure that you actually rename them accordingly to whatever you actually are doing in that layer. So let's say you actually create a layer for the hips. So you can actually start calling that hips and let's say you create another layer for the soccer ball. So you can actually call that soccer ball um, and so on and so forth. Let's say this is, for example, the cameras. Um, this will make your workflow and your fellow animator much happier because people know what you're doing. They know what each layer means and what you are editing in that layer. So make sure that as you go through it, if you're working on the hips, you always work on this layer. If you're working on the soccer ball, you always work on this layer. Same thing for cameras, so on and so forth. Now, layers have uh, this really cool feature where if you set a few keys, and I'm not gonna change the animation, I'm just gonna set a few keys so you guys can see what I mean. If I'm setting a few keys here on my hips, on my hips layer, right? Just randomly, I'm not changing anything, I'm just demonstrating the power of layers. But uh, here now I have a few keys. It's always cool for you as an animator for you to change the color of your layer because what that will give you is actually keys with different colors. Now, for you to do that, you can actually right click on top of this little button here and what that will give you is this color index settings which will change that layer specifically to have a specific color that caters to you. So let's say instead of red, we actually want yellow, right? So if you press OK, Look what happens to the time slider. All your keys on that layer are yellow now. So the same thing for the soccer, soccer ball. Let's just go and actually change it to uh, green. Same thing. And then if you actually set a few keys to this soccer ball here, you can see that they're all green, which is great for you as an animator because as you're working in the hips, for example, right? Uh, you have certain keys on the hips and you know that they're yellow. So let's say for some reason you actually start working on this soccer ball. As soon as you actually kind of move to this and you forget that you're actually working on that, this color will indicate to you as an animator that you're working on a specific layer, that you set a color, therefore is more reinforcement that you're working on the correct layer, which is really, really cool. Now, something else that happens is like right now, if I actually select my soccer ball and I move it about, like that key will actually kind of stay there and that key will stay there. So I'm just like butchering my animation right now, right? Um, nothing really happens when it comes to actually you moving keys um, as you're moving them about. Now, it would be nice if Maya had a feature where you can actually see where the anima yeah, your animation was and where you actually want to put it in. And they do have that feature and that is ghosting within layers. So you can actually click this button and you'll see that ghosting is actually activated and it's ghosting with the color, right? It gives you a way for you to see where your animation was before and where it's going next. So see that? Like that's where animation was before and now I want to put the ball somewhere there on this key. So now you have ghosting activated which is beautiful. So we had a key before and a key after, right? And, and then you actually can keep going that way as long as the object is not too heavy because, you know, just like everything else that is too heavy in Maya, if you start ghosting stuff or you have too many objects ghosted, it means that you start kind of like slowing down your Maya. So make sure you do this one object at a time, but as you go through on your ghosting, you actually kind of can move about your uh, animation and you can see the difference from the before and the after and where the ball was and where the ball is going which is very useful, very, very useful. One extra thing that you can actually do with layers as well, it's uh, mute the layer. So you guys probably know that you can actually kind of just do this and it means that all the animation that you had on the layer is no longer playing. All other animations, hips and cameras and everything else will play, but just the soccer ball animation will actually be as it was before, all the animation as it was. What you also can do is the reverse of that, which is solo layer. 
And what that would do, if I actually click that button, is that it kind of reverses that process, basically. It just shows you the soccer ball and it doesn't show you hips or cameras or any other layer. So it's basically your base animation and this together and nothing else, just those two things together. And you can see that this is the animation as is with those two layers and that's going on. And that's, that's beautiful, that's really cool. You know, it keeps it steady. So you can do both things. As you actually go through your layers, you can start kind of like like singling out specific animations for a layer and see if that works. If that works, then great, then move on to the next layer, etc., etc. Now, let's say that you have a layer for any reason that you don't want to actually kind of mess about because that layer has gold on it or it has like something specific that you don't want to mess about. So you can also lock layers. So when you lock a layer, it means that on this layer, as you can see, the, the, the keys on the bottom went from being green, as they were before, to now being grayed out. And what that means is that if I set a key on that layer, it doesn't allow me to actually kind of see anything on that layer, and it doesn't allow me to key that layer. So if I, even if I go back, as you can see there, like the, the keys that I set, even though they looked like I set them, they are not there. Because any key that I set now is not going to be added to that layer, because uh, Maya is going, nope. Is not there. So that's perfect for when you actually just want to actually kind of have the layer completely isolated and completely set and there's no changes to it whatsoever. So that's basically it. That's basically how you can actually kind of start working on your layers a little bit better, a little bit more deep. I'm going to probably like on a future episode start kind of like uh, telling you guys of like the differences between additives and overrides and how you actually can play around with your layers and make those things really really play out really well because you can actually create quite a lot of animations just with layers by actually putting them in different modes which is a beautiful thing but it requires a little bit more work. This will be a great way for you to actually have a base way of working that we then actually kind of help the other stuff that I'll, I'll actually mention on future episodes because uh, that stuff with this override layers and additive layers with this method of actually kind of naming the layers correctly, putting them in different colors and ghosting them and stuff will actually just combine together and make you guys a layers pro. And that's all I have for you guys this week. Stay well, stay safe, peace.